One of the most important things you can do on your farm each year is good soil tests, not composite tests. We're talking here about either grid sampling or zone sampling. We do a lot of zone sampling in our farm just so we don't have to pull that many samples for grids. But it does but, no good if this ends up in a file, in a file cabinet somewhere, right. or just in a pile on your desk. You've got to use these things. Now, you may say, well, you know, they only cost whatever, $30 or something to get that soil test done. You know, it's, it's not that big a deal. Hey, that's a great value. And you're gonna learn something that's gonna make you or save you thousands of dollars on your farm this year. If you know how to use it, that's the whole thing. So I talk to a lot of farmers that say, boy, I don't know, I just rely on somebody else to tell me what to do on that. Well, think about it. If you're gonna invest millions of dollars in fertilizer in your farming career, why wouldn't you wanna know about it? I think that's the most important thing to know about on your farm. So let's just start through it, even on our own soil tests on our farm. And the reason why we wanted to do these is just because these are real. I mean, this is what we actually had on our farm. And we're gonna point out some of the worst ones. So the best ones, that's pretty easy. But let's talk about things that we need to fix. And the first thing we always want you to look at on a soil test is soil pH. Soil pH affects so many things. And that's why we wanna look at that first, because it's going to affect all kinds of things in the soil from the microbial life to nutrient availability and on and on. And just your crop production potential. So when we're looking at soil pH, what we're trying to get to is somewhere around a 6.8. That's really the ideal soil pH for many of the crops that we're gonna talk about across the country. And if you're within a half a point of that, somewhere between 6.3 and 7.3 on pH, you're in a pretty good range. But once we get outside that, we wanna start managing it. For example, we've got some soil pHs, which honestly I've never seen before on our farm, but we had a couple of spots where we had pHs down into the fours. That's pretty low, that's very acidic. When we think about a 6.8 down to a 5.8, a 5.8 is 10 times more acidic than a 6.8, but a 4.8, which we had on our farm, is 100 times more acidic than a 6.8. So it's a very strong acid soil. We have to get out there and fix that. Okay. Now, fortunately, on the low pH side, you can lime. And liming is pretty easy to do. We spread lime in this particular spot of this field and in certain spots where the pH was a little bit low in other fields we had too. Okay, so anyway, there was one field where we had two different zones. One was 4.8, one was 4.7. And to be honest, this is some rented ground that we should have paid a little closer attention to. We just haven't soil sampled there as often as we should. We haven't put lime on as often as we should. We're correcting that. But you know, it's quite common for people to treat their owned ground better than they treat their rented ground. And we really try not to do that. We just made a mistake on this one particular well, and field. and you can say that. You can say we made a mistake, but really, you think about it, we come off two very dry years. I mean, the driest years yeah. that we've had since we were just kids. So that's pretty extreme weather. And a lot of times that can change things just a little bit on your for soil sure. as far as how the crop grew and, and well, so forth. Well, let's be very specific. So when you put nitrogen on expecting 250 bushels corn like we were and you get 150 or 120 or whatever it is all of a sudden you got a whole bunch of extra nitrogen there what does that do that lowers the soil ph so we've had other issues in this particular field that has been conventional till for many years this isn't one of the fields that we strip till this has been a long-term conventional till field and because of that we have destroyed maybe a little bit of the organic matter i start taking a look and i've got organic matter levels in the two to three range so that's relatively low so when that organic matter is destroyed you're going to lower the soil ph we're also creating a little bit of compaction that's holding the nitrogen up. It isn't allowing water to flow through. We've addressed the drainage issue with some tile, so hopefully that'll flush some things through. But we have had some issues with excess nitrogen there, and we just have to manage that a little bit better. So we're going to put lime on. We'll raise the soil pH. Okay, now let's talk about the other extreme because we've got some high pH areas of our fields too. And many times for us where we have high pH issues, it's where we've got a drainage problem. So it's those low spots in the field where things just can't flush through the soil like they normally would because the water table is too high. In those particular areas, many of them we have addressed with drainage tile already and the pH is beginning to come down, but we certainly find spots all the time that, you know, it would probably do us some good if we ran some more tile here. Maybe our spacing isn't close enough together, or maybe we need a few more lateral runs right through this region of the field. We've got some pHs in the upper sevens to very low eights, so for our farm that's high. Now I know talking to other yeah, farmers around the country, they have higher pH than we do of course, but 
still, for us, it's high enough that it's hurting us in yield. We're losing money in those spots of the field every year compared to what we could get, so we need to get out there and address yeah, it. Yeah, but tiling will take care of that over time. It's just a lot of the tile on our farm hasn't been in the ground for more than five years. Well, and so then we haven't had rain for a couple of years either where the tile lines haven't through. run. Right, so right. That, that will change when we get back but, to quote unquote normal weather. Yeah, but we don't have a lot of ground that's over 7.3 pH, and it's just a few spots in a few fields, and those, those fields are tiled now, so over time, that soil pH is going to come down. Let's move on. We go to base saturation next. This one is complicated. A lot of people get confused by this. This is a ratio of five different nutrients to each other. It's potassium, magnesium, calcium, hydrogen, and sodium. And here's what we're looking for. The hydrogen and the sodium we want low. So hydrogen less than 10, sodium less than one. We don't have a lot of issues with either of those except for where the low pH is. That's where you have high hydrogen. You put lime out there. You'll lower the hydrogen amount as you raise the soil pH problem solved that's easy then we get to the other ones potassium is also pretty easy to fix you well, need to be four to eight percent with potassium yeah I, okay I, I, i'm just laughing Brad, because you say oh potassium is easy to fix well, we've got potassium issues on our farm yep. and we've had them for a few years yeah it just the costs money is, to fix it it costs money to fix it <laughs> right so you say it's easy we know the solution it's just the, the total solution is so expensive it's not we expensive can't do it all you at have to look time. at what's good return on investment that's why you look at the soil test so you can find find out where your best returns are. If you've got a potassium level in the range of four to eight percent, adding more potassium isn't going to provide you as good a return on investment as if your K level is down at two percent like we have in a couple situations. Well fortunately for us magnesium isn't an issue on our farm at least being too low an amount of magnesium. If you're low like below 12 percent you need to be adding some magnesium in there but again if you have too much of a good thing like over 25 percent which we do have in some of our heavy clay soils then you've got another issue and improving drainage well, is one of the things over the long term and also using products like gypsum or just getting more calcium out there to balance well, yeah, that's that the ratio. Big, that's the big thing. It's in ratio. So if your magnesium is above 25%, just raise everything else. Just raise the calcium, raise your potassium, and your magnesium percentage is going to go down a little bit. So the magnesium we're not that terribly worried about. If you can get all the other things right, the magnesium is a lot less of a concern. So again, that's base saturation. That's the second thing we want to look at on the soil test. And coming up next, right after this break, we're going to talk about perhaps the most important thing you need to know on your soil test as a farmer.